This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Palmas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and I'm Stanley Floyd. Coming up in this week's broadcast, elders prepare for certification and over 120 persons choose to live healthy. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. For the past 12 months, elders from the 24 fields within the Inter-American Division have been preparing for their annual certification. This event is a part of their continuing education program designed to help local church leaders fulfill the demands of ministry for the times in which we live. Ministerial Secretary for the South Bahamas Conference, Pastor T. Basil Stirrup, is the one responsible for the ongoing training for elders in the South Bahamas Conference. I am pleased with the significant increase in the number of elders who participated in the program this year compared to last year's enrollment. And as a conference, we welcome this initiative, which is designed to prepare and empower leaders in the local church for greater service to the community. So I'm really excited about what's going to transpire this weekend. Pastor Michael A. Smith, Ministerial Secretary for the Atlantic Caribbean Union Mission of Seventh-day Adventists, will host this program to certify elders from the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. All elders are asked to attend tomorrow's Zoom meeting at 4 o'clock for the climax of this year's program. To get information on how to receive your certificate, please see your pastor or log on to the South Bahamas Conference website for the link to attend the Zoom meeting. Eight Weeks to Wellness is now being conducted online. This year, over 120 persons already signed up for the program, which commenced on February 8th. The program continues to see an increase in persons who have made their health a matter of choice. Each Monday, the participants log in for an exercise routine conducted by veteran fitness instructor Natasha Brown, a spiritual devotional boost, informative presentations by health professionals, and breakout sessions with their personal coaches. This week, Dr. Joseph Evans, author of the book, A Simple Plan to Prevent Cancer, spoke on the subject of cancer prevention. Back in the 1800s, the scientists of the day discovered that people who came down with cancer had certain things in common. They came to the conclusion that fat had something to do with cancer and why people come down with cancer. At the time, they could not go any further than that. That was as far as their knowledge could take them. But it gave them a clue as to why some people came down with cancer. Now, around the uh, early part of the next century, around 1926, it was discovered that oxygen had something to do with it. As a matter of fact, there was a scientist who was able to lower the level of oxygen in tissues and raise the level of oxygen in tissues at will. He developed techniques for doing this. What he discovered is that if the oxygen level in tissues fell about 35%, the tissues became cancerous. And interestingly, he found that if he raised the oxygen level back up, to normal, the cancer disappeared. So there was a clue. Oxygen had something to do with cancer. The Eight Weeks No Wellness program continues every Monday at 6 p.m. until April 5th. Go to our website and register. Good health is a matter of choice. We'll be back with the upcoming events in our conference. Are you ready for a healthy start? The Eight Weeks to Wellness program has what you need to get on track. Sessions include coaching, screenings, along with informative presentations on what you should be eating to live a long, healthy life, weight management techniques, how to start your backyard farm, and much more. Participate in practical cooking demos that will put you on the road to eating healthier. Wellness is a matter of choice. Sessions will be held on Mondays beginning February 8th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Enroll now by completing a registration form at the South Bahamas Conference Headquarters on Tonic Williams Darling Highway. Call 242-341-4021 or visit the South Bahamas Conference website at www.southbahamasconference.org to sign up. 
As a bonus, this year's program has two additional weeks of instruction with our team of health professionals. Register now and say yes to a healthier life. Welcome back to Adventist News. Coming up in the South Bahamas Conference, a consecration service will be held this weekend by our conference for all leaders and assistants in the Children and Adolescent Ministries Department of our churches, along with supporting personnel. The service scheduled for Saturday, February 20th at 4.30 p.m. will be hosted online via Zoom and can be viewed on the conference's Facebook page and YouTube channel. The guest speaker, Pastor Terry Tanis, Executive Secretary for the Turks and Caicos Islands Conference of Seventh Adventists, will provide the charge for CHAM leaders. All persons in the CHAM department are asked to attend, and the public is invited to lend their support. Wednesday, pause and pray. The special edition for the Women's Ministries Department of our conference will be held on February 24th from 12 to 12.30 p.m. Please keep in mind it will be 30 minutes of power-packed prayers, testimonies, and encouragement for women of all walks of life. Login information can be found on our website. Bombs Academy will hold its entrance examination on Sunday, February 28th at the school located on Marshall Road from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. This will be for all students wishing to enter grades 1 through 10. Application forms are available at the school's office or at the conference headquarters on Tonic Williams Darling Highway. These forms should be completed and returned to the school by Friday, February 26, along with the processing fee. Please call 242-461-2100 during office hours for more information. The second annual Adventure 2021 for the Pathfinders of the South Bahamas Conference under the theme, Be Strong, is virtual again this year. Parents are encouraged to sign up the adventurers as this year's program will teach them how to be brave and obedient and find purpose and salvation. Registration continues until March 2nd, so please call your Pathfinder Club Director for more information. For more information on these events, please visit our conference website at southbahamasconference.org where you can view our news update along with other programming from our cable channel ATV 658, read the weekly logos, and the Adventist page publication from the NASA Guardian. Anger is an intense emotion that can sometimes cause hostile behavior and activates our fight or flight response. There's no one way to cause anger. In fact, every individual has different triggers. Some people think that anger is a bad emotion and that emotion should be kept in. But bottled anger makes things worse and oftentimes lead to depression and anxiety. Most times anger pushes us to do better. If handled correctly, it can give us a sense of calm after an outburst and motivate us to effectively solve problems. Our diet can increase our mood when we eat fish and leafy greens that contain dopamine, otherwise known as the feel-good chemical. Even by getting more vitamin D from the sun, we can reduce our incidence of depression and mood disorders. The Better Health Channel suggests healthy ways to manage anger for the long term. 1. Keep a diary of your angry outbursts and try to understand why you get mad. 2. Exercise regularly. 3. Learn relaxation techniques such as meditation or yoga. Ephesians 4 verse 26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. This has been Parisha Ferguson with your health tip, courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. We go now to our news feature from around the world with the Adventist News Network. During the month of January, more than 9,000 young people got involved in the Caleb Mission Project in the Brazilian states of Rio de Janeiro, Minas Gerais, and Espiritu Santo. 
The young people focused on volunteer and missionary work and influenced others to change their lives and accept Christ as their savior. Taking precautions to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, the young people delivered Bible studies to more than 8,000 people. In addition to evangelism, social actions such as blood donation, food collection, construction, and home renovations have benefited the lives of many families, including those affected by the floods in Tres Rios, Brazil. The Caleb Mission Project aims to mobilize thousands of young people across South America, challenging them to dedicate part of their vacations to evangelism in places where there is no Adventist presence. It has become the biggest youth movement in South America. The Adventist Church in South America sent this report about some of the work the Caleb's are doing in their community. A gente até que tentou definir em uma palavra o significado da missão Caleb. Não deu. Amor, empatia, compaixão, solidariedade, coragem, força, missão. É melhor esquecer o dicionário e usar o coração para tentar entender o que motivou mais de 9 mil jovens no Rio de Janeiro, Espírito Santo e Minas Gerais a usarem suas férias em meio à pandemia para ajudar o próximo e levar esperança. Eles não só colocaram a mão na massa, como o pé na lama. Levaram sua força jovem a quem mais precisava, seu carinho a quem buscava uma palavra de motivação. E o mais importante, sua fé para centenas de pessoas que ainda não conheciam a Jesus. Foram vistos e ouvidos por milhares de telespectadores e internautas. Mas quer saber qual sensação foi melhor que ter uma foto no jornal? A de ver pessoas sendo levadas a Cristo. Foram mais de mil batismos. Um deles aconteceu na Igreja Adventista da Pavuna, sul do Rio de Janeiro. Esse é o Carlos Alberto. Ele esteve internado em estado grave e recebeu doação de sangue de uma equipe dos Calebs. Após ter alta do hospital, ele começou os estudos bíblicos e decidiu entregar a vida a Jesus. And that brings us to the end of our Adventist news from the South Bahamas Conference of Seven Adventists. Please feel free to share what is happening at your church by sending us your news stories and upcoming events by email to sbcadventistnews at gmail.com. To view a rebroadcast of the Adventist news along with other programming, or to keep in touch with what's happening in our conference, you can visit our conference website at southbahamasconference.org. Like, follow, and subscribe to our Facebook and Instagram pages, as well as our YouTube channel. And on behalf of the production team of Adventist Television Channel 658, thank you for watching our news broadcast. I'm Stanley Fullord for the SBC Media Network. Have a happy Sabbath.